do your research and by research i mean stalking <laughs> good old googling yeah good old googling look them up on linkedin okay i do believe that some stalking is healthy you know because you're going to be putting yourself in a situation where your physical safety can be uh, compromised Why go out and meet people when you can swipe through a sea of potential partners from the comfort of your own couch? Today we'll talk to a guest who says that online apps don't deserve their bad rep. She's even going to tell us why a little ghosting shouldn't scare anyone off and why she prefers to look for love online instead of in person. Hi, I'm Evelyn Sharma, and you're listening to Love Matters, a podcast about relationship issues that matter to you and me. So I've heard from people who want to ban all dating apps. But today, our guest has exactly the opposite point of view. She thinks online apps are great for finding love. In fact, she met her current partner on not one, but two different dating apps. So whether you're already looking for love on Tinder, Bumble, or OkCupid, or you're considering signing up, this is an episode especially for you. But first, let's meet our guest. Surbi Baga is a stand-up comic, TV writer, and host of the Overthink Tank podcast. Surbi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Evelyn. That was a lovely welcome. I feel like this is the podcast that... I should have been guested on, you know, like love matters. It just feels so right. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited to share my tricks. Fantastic. Well, we're so, so glad to have you today on the show. Tell us straight up, what is the best thing about online dating? I believe that dating apps are a boon for introverts like me, specifically because otherwise, if no dating apps exist, then your next option is to walk up to people in a bar and strike a conversation, you know, and hope that the other person is single also. And it's also equally, you know, out in the market. Well, I wouldn't think that um, stand-up comic is an introvert, <laughs> but I'm sure when it comes to dating, we all have different aspects to ourselves. What do you think is the drawback, though, uh, when it comes to online dating? The catch is that it can make you feel like you're just a profile out in the ether. Yeah. But also, your partner is one swipe away, you know, one message away. Yeah, because I have heard from quite a few people who are just done with online dating, who have been, you know, wronged, as they say, online. But then I guess we can be wronged in real life, too. I mean, do you want to meet someone in a bar or through a friend or online? And I guess online is the very much 21st century way to meet someone. So I have tried out every approach that people talk about, right? As you just mentioned, the approach of asking a friend to set you up with someone. Mm -hmm. That's how I met my husband. So oh, okay. there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's beautiful, but it can mm -hmm. end up two ways. There's Absolutely. always the fear of meeting someone and not liking them, that person as much. And then... Uh, how do you tell your friend that, oh, by the way, the guy you set me up with was a bore or he just, I wouldn't, I would want an end to this friendship as well. You know, <laughs> thanks for ruining <laughs> my evening. So that's a con. And what else is on that list? I feel like there are multiple cons depending on how you approach dating apps. Like for me, I personally feel like a lot of people complain that dating apps don't feel as organic as you know meeting someone at a bar or meeting someone at a mutual friend's birthday party but to me I feel like anything is as organic as you make it to be so just the fact that dating apps make it a little easier for you to have the first meeting or have the first dialogue without feeling like the ground beneath your feet is shaking. It makes it easy for you to talk to people. And then what you make of it, like once you meet the person in real life, 
then what the connection that you have is still going to be organic. It's still sort of like a blind date, isn't it? Because you've spoken to the person and you've texted with the person, but it still can be pretty dangerous. Once you meet them in real life, they will not be that person that you hoped them to be. They will be themselves and hopefully that's what you will love about them. But uh, it could also go the other way that you're like, you get this reality check. Yeah, that is also a gamble that you take, right? That's just regardless of what app you use, if you meet them because your friend made you meet them. That's the gamble that you're taking when you're looking for love. In my opinion, things can go wrong anywhere in the world. I mean, we've all seen Tinder Swindler. I bet there's someone out there who's planning to be a bumble humble <laughs> or like unhinged on hinge. I do believe that you can make dating apps work for you, but you can also be more frivolous about love. Yeah. It's about what you want. So I, I remember using dating apps as a way to casually Uh, meet people with no intention of you know love no intention of sort of getting into a relationship so as long as you are clear about what you want and you're not here to waste anybody else's time or your own time I think that is what sort of brings the maturity even in a dating app you can be mature about you know what you're seeking and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to like hurt you unintentionally or intentionally. What if you don't know what you want and you're just browsing the catalog? Well, that's also, I think, something that you can be you can be open about. You can just be like, I have never been on a dating app. So I'm just exploring my options, just seeing what's out there. And um, yeah, just knowing, even if you don't know what you want, knowing that you don't know what you want is good enough. It's a good start. That's true. You have to look at it as a ratio game, right? Where every 20 dates you go to, one of the person might be the person that, you know, you have a connection with. So basically, you have to have fun with it. You have to enjoy dating apps as something that you just can't take too serious. I guess there there's a lot of fun to be had on uh, dating apps. What's one of the most hilarious experiences that you had? I went on a date with this guy who seemed amazing on text, you know, mm. seemed like a fun person, seemed like someone I could have a drink with and then see where it goes. And then he showed up in his uh, shorts and his mm -hmm. bathroom slippers almost What? to the bar. <laughs> Literally five minutes into the date, I was like, okay, um, I can only uh, down this one beer and then I have to be out. So the date went well in in his own right. He was being, I think, open about his job. But in my opinion, I think I, mm -hmm. I have never heard someone talk about crypto for 45 minutes at length. Oh my, you could talk to me about crypto for like three hours. I still would not get it. <laughs> well, he's a typical crypto boy. And honestly, just read the room. Check in with your um, date. See if they have anything to share mm. instead of just going on and on about your job. So that's something I have... I mean, luckily for me, I don't have to go on any more dates because I have found someone. <laughs> right. Let's talk about that. How did you meet your partner? Okay. My current partner, he was on a dating app. I met him on Bumble first and we swiped. Like we matched with each other and we started texting for a week. And uh, out of nowhere, obviously, the second wave of the pandemic hit us in the face. It was just a lot. So I personally just felt very like, how could I be on a dating app looking for love when the world around me is looking for hospital beds and, you know, there's this crisis everywhere. Mm. I just felt that dating apps were really frivolous. And uh, for me, in that moment, I immediately uninstalled the dating app I was on I just I know that it made me sort of like a ghoster because I didn't text anybody I just didn't have the energy of like you know talking to people because on dating apps first of all you know you have to really the talking stage is the hardest one because that's when 
you're really opening up about what you do and la 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 la, what I like doing, where do I hang, what do I do in my free time. Mm. And if you're not in the right mental space, then you can get very sort of depressing to be talking about all that stuff. And on the other hand of the dating app, you're feeling like shit and you're feeling like none of this is going to matter, right? Like, especially when there's so much other health anxiety on your mind. So I completely ghosted my partner the first time I started talking to him. Uh, But like exactly a year later, I'd taken some therapy. That's always good. Yeah, that's always good. Comes in handy. So I was back on another dating app, swiping away, feeling myself, feeling like, okay, cool. The world's back on. Let me give this a shot again. Boom. I find the person I was talking to exactly one year ago. And immediately I I swiped back at him and I was like, hey, the sequel, (laughs) Uh, the sequel's always better than the first part. So I said, let's immediately catch up. I was like, um, you know, the weekend's right here. Meet me for a coffee. Coffee is always a safe bet because uh, by the time the coffee cools, uh, I'll know if this this has any potential. Mm. So, uh, so I went for a coffee date. My, I think when I look back and I think about this date, I think I really have to give it to myself to for meeting this person immediately because sometimes there's a lot that you can't figure about a person through just texting. Yeah. So I think meeting, even though it might seem a little nerve wracking to meet someone immediately, I was of the opinion that, you know, let's see. Right. Let's see where this goes. I always have an out. I always have like someone texting me if I need to get a early out or I can just be honest and I can just tell them, hey, you know, great meeting you, but... um, I don't think this is going anywhere and I have to be back home. So just like a polite way of telling them that it's not working. So I think uh, me, I met him immediately. We kind of started talking and that one coffee date led to dinner dates and more dinner dates. And then we went dancing. Hmm. The thing about our first date, which, which my partner loves reminding me, is that he asked me, what are you looking for on the dating app? Mm. And my answer was that I'm looking for love. Aww, that is so cute, you guys. I feel like, I feel even though you said, uh, you know, a con sometimes is that it doesn't feel so organic when you meet someone via a dating app. But to be honest, I feel like what you're telling me sounds like a very organic progression of a relationship. And you did meet online. Um, you did transition it into real life quickly, which I think is maybe key, um, you know, at least for some people, um, to take it offline um, as soon as possible and not become a online relationship because then you're really living in this dream world of who the other person is, um, but rather really take it quickly into real life. Like you said, a coffee date is just so... Um, casual like you can have have coffee with anyone and it's daytime it's a safe place a safe environment um yeah just give it a shot meet the person see if you vibe or not 100 percent. and uh, he, i remember my partner still tells me about how he was taken aback like a little bit about how intensely i said i'm looking for love and i meant it <laughs> i wasn't joking about because a lot of people who are on dating apps they have all kinds of answers when you ask them why are you here what's your purpose and yeah, yeah. some people might just say oh i'm looking for you know friends or mm. i'm looking to just um, hang out with new people Mm. and not a lot of people say that I'm looking for love but Mm. I'd reached that point in my personal life and I was like okay I know what I want then why can't I just say it out loud it won't (laughs) make me a smaller person right yeah just I feel like some of us feel kind of ashamed of the fact that we need love which is so silly like why do we look down on the fact that you need to feel loved just like everybody else and why does it give out like desperate energy to say that I'm looking for love and I feel like a lot of times when you say what you want you actually then receive that it's really funny because sometimes you just have to be really honest and say what your heart desires and 
and the other person then knows what to give to you. That's right. That's so true. We're like all our lives we've been told to sort of, you know, hide your true interest and keep them to yourself. Whatever you really want, trust, don't say it out loud. Mm. But the feeling of freedom that you get by saying exactly what you want, that is something else, you know. And I think like, I could have been in so many good relationships or just friendships, like mutually agreed upon friendships are better than one sided love affairs. Yeah, I was in a relationship thinking that, okay, I want love, but I wouldn't say it out loud. And the other person has no idea that I want love. The other person's like, okay, we're, we're casually hooking up. And I'm treating him like my boyfriend, but he's treating me his, like his one of his casual, you know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, it's all about communication. And actually, you know, it requires bravery to say what your heart desires because you put yourself out there vulnerably um, and you can be hurt by someone else not giving that to you. And uh, that hurts when they, they knew exactly what you wanted. And they didn't give it to you. But it also shows you who the other person is and whether they are the right person to have this uh, place in your life or not. Yeah. Well, on the podcast, we always have an info box related to the topic. So why don't we quickly have a listen into today's info box? Ooh, let's go for it. La, 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 la. Love matters. According to a survey conducted by YouGov in 2021, around 44% of Indians have used a dating app at some point in their lives. But only 26% of people on dating apps are women, says Business Insider India. Research also shows that online dating in India can be particularly challenging for women. They often face harassment from male users. As a result, many dating apps have implemented safety features to try to protect their users. Hmm, that's interesting. What do you think about that? I mean, it's definitely not shocking, but mm -hmm. the number, the 20, like, I was, I always knew that there's less women on dating apps, but it's way less. Mm -hmm. It's 26%. It's kind of shocking, honestly. Maybe they aren't trusting the men on dating apps as much. Which makes sense. I mean, men haven't really shown uh, good <laughs> report cards. <laughs> They're like the biggest threat to your safety. Yeah, well, online and offline, I suppose. <laughs> so I guess it is a bit scary to not really know who the other person is. I also think that we need to figure out a middle point where women can feel like they can go to a date and not be, you know, stuck there when they clearly don't feel like it's working for them. So do you have any tips for our listeners? What are the top three questions that you can ask someone on a dating app so you kind of get an idea who they are before you go on the date? I would say, first of all, a set of three questions is not enough to know them. Yeah. So do your research. And um, by research, I mean stalking. <laughs> the good old googling yeah good old googling look them up on linkedin okay i do believe that some stalking is healthy you know because you're going to be putting yourself in a situation where your physical safety can be uh, compromised so a basic check here and there is totally fine so what else to look out for maybe having like really old photos of you and still using them on the dating app like that's been pretty weird yeah Okay. What do you think is like, okay, hey, that's a red flag. Do not continue talking to this person. There's a point in the conversation where you can start like spewing hate about your ex. And that's when I'm like a little turned off. I'm like, all right, I get that you were in a relationship, but don't shit on your ex on mm. your on your first date with somebody else. That feels a little weird because I feel like, okay, he's going to lead the date. And on the next date, he's going to talk smack about me. That's right. But how do I protect myself, my heart to not get broken, I guess, is the question that a lot of people would ask. I think if you if you really want to do dating apps, it's a good time for you to, you know, get uh, accumulated with all the different words that there are related to the dating app world. 
I mean, you know, we've all heard about ghosting, but there's breadcrumbing, yeah. there's benching. Benching is when somebody is, you know, talking to you, but they're honestly just keeping you on the bench. So some of the people that you find on dating apps might be doing that to you. And knowing that this is a thing that happens can keep you at least a little safe and like a little aware. Yeah. I mean, there's always a bad apple, right? On on any app, you can meet like a douchebag on Facebook or a douchebag on any app. Or in any bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess to sum this up, if you're looking for whatever you're looking for online, be honest about it. Be transparent in your conversations with people that you match up with. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows what they're in for if they were to go on a date with you. Be kind to each other. Don't hurt each other. Yes. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Yeah, that's very good. When is the time to finally delete the app? When are you done with the dating app? Um, so in my case, I deleted the dating app. I think at the two month mark when I was kind of, I'm seeing my partner and I was like, you know, I'm not actively using the dating apps because I'm, I'm very much interested in pursuing this right now. Mm. So in fact, he was the first one to delete his dating app. And um, the kind of person that he is, he wrote everybody a message, like a little text for all of his matches saying that, hello, thank you for talking with me. I have found someone I'm interested in and I'm pursuing this relationship. Hope you have a good life before he uninstalled the app, which is which is basically good etiquette, right? Like nobody is taught this, but you know, accidentally uninstalling an app and then making the other person feel like you're being ghosted is something that happens as well. So just taking a little extra time to make the other person across the phone feel like you're also a human and so am I. And here's a little message to give you closure. Right. Or change your bio, you know. Or change of bio, or or just uh, if you if you don't want to be on a dating app, just just message everybody who you recently matched with. All the people you're breadcrumbing, and all the people that you're <laughs> benching at the moment. Just give them a shout out. <laughs> just send them a little a letter to each everybody's house, like hello. <laughs> but I think yeah, good dating app etiquette is something that we aren't like really familiar with. So I think. If that is made more normal, then everybody would behave like a like a gentleman slash woman on dating apps. Like it's not a playground for you to hurt someone. It's you have to be a kind person and to yourself and to the other person. Kindness is what will get you to your partner or, you know, to your whoever, just a good friend. That's a really good book to write <laughs> online dating etiquette i wonder if that's already there <laughs> um awesome well thank you so much Sorby. um i feel like what i have understood from our conversation is that dating is very much linked to personal growth you may start out somewhere like you said uh, the Sorby i would have met a few years ago is very different from the one who you are now and I, I'm sure that your dating life has led to a lot of personal growth and self-discovery. And I guess everyone that you meet online is just another contribution to your personal growth, which is beautiful. And I think that that is also what really defines like the coming generations. Um, I've heard that a lot from Gen Z um, that they like to go into relationships for, um, you know, not forever, but for a, a season where they get to know each other and kind of help each other grow and, you know, then move on. And I feel like taking the pressure off is good, uh, especially when it comes to online dating, mm -hmm. to just, you know, not go in with too high of expectations. You may make a friend, you may make a partner or, um, you know, you may not like them, which is also fine. <laughs> That's so beautifully said, you know, you may want a partner, you may want, you may make them a friend, or you may just realize something that you have been secretly wanting your entire life and you've just not yeah. been addressing it. 
So just go in with an open mind and uh, make sure you're not there to hurt anybody. And when your intentions are right, then you will attract the right people, I think. Yeah. Awesome to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Evelyn. Thank you. I had a great time chatting with you. You've been listening to Love Matters, a podcast about relationship topics that matter to you and me. From Indian Express and DW, Germany's international broadcaster. If you think there's something that we need to talk about, or there's a topic that is important to you, and you think we need to cover it, please write to lovematters at dw.com. And don't forget to share our podcast with your friends. I'm Evelyn Sharma, and I think love matters. Love matters. Love matters.